Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Look at that nice blue. Really brings out the suffering in my eyes. <laughs> anyway, uh, today's video, guess what? We're going to continue uh, my series on how to write SQL Server queries correctly. And in today's video, we are going to cover in and not in because there are some funny things about uh, these, 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 these directives in T-SQL. But of course, before we get on with that, let's talk about you and me and you being nice to me for once. <clears throat> Mom, uh, if, if you would like to sign up for a membership to my channel, uh, there's a link right in the video description that says become a member. You can do so for as little as $4 a month. If uh, four dollars a month would, uh, would would mean that your your child doesn't go to college, uh, then I understand. Uh, you can do free stuff like like and comment and subscribe. Uh, I don't know. I assume you can read. So I don't know. There's like fifty two hundred some odd people who have already subscribed. Uh, you, that the 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 member number is personal, but there's like over thirty of them. So uh, you wouldn't be in bad company in either, in either case. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server, if the things that I talk about in these videos make your, make your brain light up and make you think, huh, maybe, maybe, maybe Eric Darling could, could make my SQL Server faster in exchange for money. Uh, I, I do all of these things, according to Beer Gut Magazine, the best in the world. So uh, there's really no reason not to hire me to fix your SQL Servers. And as always, my rates are reasonable. If you would like some very high quality, very low cost SQL Server training, you can get all of mine via a magical link again in the video description down, down in there uh, for about 150 US dollars for life. So uh, that would be good of you to do as well. Uh, end of 2024, not going nowhere for work. Uh, only, only leisure travel from here on out, but, uh, starting in 2025, my, my interest will be renewed in, in, in going to, uh, conferences and conventions and, um, you know, uh, doing pre-cons in exchange for money, which is uh, a great joy in my life. But we are now free to examine in and not in, in some, in some level of detail. So uh, just to make sure that we are as brief and explicit as possible, uh, the only time that I use in and not in is if I am comparing a column to a list of literal values. That's it. Um, the rest of the time, I will use exists or not exists. Now, even with not in, if I am comparing a column to a list of literal values, which for most queries is really the only sensible thing you could do, uh, I, you do still have to worry about if the column that you're comparing that list to allows nulls, because you can get weird results if nulls are involved. Even then, you, you might be better off writing a very strange looking not exists with the values clause to figure things out. Uh, if I have to go comparing one column in a table to another column, and my in or not in is like, you know, a, a column from one table, comparing that to a subquery uh, that selects a column from another table, I am even more wary of using in and not in. Then I will definitely only ever use exists and not exists. Now it's less of a big deal with in uh, because in doesn't have some of the weird intricacies that not in has. Not in, you have to be very, very careful if columns on either side of your, your equation use nulls at all, because nulls will give you uh, unexpected results with not in. Uh, but exists or not exists, the syntax, I just, it just generally feels better to me. Um, and I don't have to worry about writing overly defensive code or about having perfect indexes for every single time, because uh, not in, again, you get some weird stuff. So uh, let's look at uh, a quick example of where not in uh, can, can make things weird for you. So I have two tables called good and bad. They both have a single ID column. It's an integer that allows nulls. Uh, I'm going to run through this a few times with a few different setups and just kind of show you what I mean. 
So when, when we say not in, SQL Server doesn't quite understand how to uh, do null comparisons in this, right? It just do, does it in a, in a way that is not, uh, not the same as it does with in or exists or not exists. So right now I'm going to insert a one into good and a null into bad. And we, you would think that the, the SQL Server would be like, oh, uh, there, there's, there's only uh, none in here. There's, there's one value in good that is not in bad, but we get zero back, right? Because the null comparison SQL Server is like, there's nothing there. I don't know what to do. The same thing will happen if we say null here and we put two in here, SQL Server will still say mm, zero, which is again weird. If we put a one into good, oops, that's new, new ill, that didn't go well. But if we put a one in here and a two in the other table, we will get the result that we expected, where SQL Server will tell us that there's one record in good that is not in bad. So if you're comparing on nullable columns that actually have nulls in them on either side of a not in expression, uh, that's either the column that is not in or the not in from the subquery uh, in the not in expression, uh, you can end up with results that look funny, uh, especially because if you're like, wait a minute, uh, let me write that as an in instead, then you'll get like, you know, some opposite result back that makes sense because that like as the opposite result, but you'll still kind of be left with this bizarre lingering sense of uh, incompleteness in the universe with when you use not in. So uh, really, um, exists and not exists are just far more reliable uh, directives to use in uh, SQL in general. Uh, we're talking about T-SQL specifically, but these rules will generally apply across all SQLs. Uh, so just really, uh, you know, stick to exists and not exists as much as you can. Uh, in, and, in and not in, um, you know, if, if, you have, if, you're, if it's literal values within, fine. Um, but even if it's literal values with not in, you have to be very careful about nulls and you have to write your query defensively uh, to, to explicitly remove nulls to, in order to get that working. Now, uh, I did a performance focused video about not in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rehash a little bit of that. Um, again, uh, oh, why aren't you spelled out correctly? Oh, I hate when I use old code where I didn't, I didn't use the, the, full, the full word integer. It's very embarrassing for me, uh, but I've already created two tables that uh, allow that are integers that allow nulls, and um, I've written two versions of, of I've populated them with explicitly from two different tables in the Stack Overflow database where the, where no null values ended up in the tables, but the columns are nullable. Now the big problem here is that SQL Server adds a, a sort of like without even like announcing itself, unbeknownst to you adds a whole bunch of defensive stuff to the query plan uh, in the event that a null occurs in the results. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So what I'm going to show you is this is the estimated plan for this. Um, it does all sorts of things in here. The estimated plan doesn't really, like, this is mostly just to show you that there is a lot of added complexity. Uh, we hit old users once, twice, three times, and we touch new users once, but uh, the actual execution plan, you can see just how painful this was. This ran for over 20 minutes, 21 minutes, 22 seconds. And a lot of the problem in this query was, uh, it's a query plan pattern that is really, really bad, but SQL Server just inserts it when you use not in with nullable columns, right? See, like, see, like you might see this query plan pattern in other, other places in SQL Server, but uh, this is where SQL Server just throws it in there um, with, to, to protect itself. So you have this top above a scan. And uh, like if you see a top above a scan and the scan is on a big table, you're in real trouble. That's never any fun because this, this nested loops join is going to make this do a lot of work. Right? So you have a lot of rows that come out of here. You have a lot of rows that go into the loop join and you have a lot of scans of the old users table. That's a bad time. Now, what, what I said about using not exist, like not having to worry about having perfect indexes or writing really complex or, or rather, rather adding complexity to the query to like 
like hard code protection against nulls. Like, sure, I could add an index on old users on the, the, the user ID column or whatever I called it, and there would be a top above a seek and that would be faster. But uh, you would still run into the sort of logic, I'm, I'm gonna call it a logical inconsistency, even though it's consistent behavior, it doesn't feel right to me for not in to screw up with nulls the way it does or to handle nulls the way it does. So you could add an index, sure, and that would be faster, but now you have to worry about, you know, indexing your temp tables every single time you do this pattern. Uh, you could add a bunch of explicit not null checks um, on, the old, on the new users and old users table. You could write that query very defensively. Or you could not worry about any of that stuff and just use the not exist version. This, that's what I've done here. We say, you know, select the records from new users where not exists, correlate on that. And rather than taking 20 minutes, this runs in a few seconds, uh, actually about two and a, well, a little under two and a half seconds. So apart from the logical reasons for avoiding not in when uh, with nullable columns, because, you know, let's face it, a lot of people out there are afraid of making a column not null because who knows, right? For the same reason that developers will make every string column varchar255 or even a max data type just because they're afraid of truncation errors or who knows what, even though the, 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 the column is like state code and you're like, wow, like Massachusetts, New York, California, uh, M-A-C-A, N-Y-C-T, like none of these things are ever going to be 255, but who, who knows what will happen? Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even I don't even have a reasonable thing to put in there. Maybe someone will like say they live in every state or something and you'll have, you know, 50 times two and that's 100, but not even 255. Wow, it'd be real hard to do that. But uh, developers screw things up constantly. That's why I am a, I am a consultant with reasonable with reasonable rates. It fixes these things. OK, so anyway. You are far better off from both a performance and a, uh, and a uh, consistency point of view using um, exists and not exists over in and not in. Um, like I've said a few times now, it doesn't really matter with in because in does works the way that the same way that exists does, regardless of nulls. Um, so if you have a list of literal values or a subquery, you are safe using in. Uh, if you have a list of literal values or a column to column comparison with not in, and those columns are nullable, but don't contain any nulls, you can end up with a really wacky query plan unless you explicitly filter out nulls with your query. Uh, and you have really good indexes in place to support that query. Uh, with not, but with not in, if you, like if you just have a column and a list of literals, you still have to worry about that column because any nulls in that column will make the list of literals from the, the, the not in clause misbehave, right? So just be like, be wary out there, exists and not exists are the better choice because they, they, they both act consistently with probably what you would want to get back for, for your query results. Um, since there are no nulls, the first query returns correct results, but the amount of work SQL Server has to do to make sure that it doesn't encounter any nulls or that it can behave safely if any nulls is pretty absurd. Right, twenty something minutes to do all, do that work sucks. Um, you can, of course, index the temp tables, um, but a lot of people uh, have 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 read one single blog post in their entire career about that, and 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 think that it's always a bad idea. So, it's a separate conversation. But you know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna be honest with you. I've I've had a lot of really good luck indexing temp tables in my life. So, uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? Um, uh, the SQL Server has room for a breadth of experiences in, when it comes to performance tuning. But anyway, um, I, I, was gonna, I was gonna say something else, but um, now I'm just giggling internally and I've, I've lost my train of thought. So uh, that was uh, just about it for in and not in. Again, exists and not exists are, uh, are, are, far, are usually far better options. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk about common table expressions a bit. I actually have two videos coming up uh, for common table expressions. Um, 
and they, they both sort of have different approaches to them. So there's one that I'm going to talk about next, and there's one that I'm going to talk about, uh, one that I'm going to go at the, at the very end of the, the series. Uh, so there's, there's multiple contents on common table expressions because there, there is quite a bit to say about them. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed you, yourselves. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you in the next video about common table expressions, which is going to be fun.